Our last topic for this lesson is about monitoring file system events. And we'll be looking at an API that goes under the name of iNotify. We'll see how to create an iNotify instance, how to add watchers to the instance, and how to read events from it. Uh, and if these things don't make much sense to you right now, hopefully they will in a few minutes. So the idea is that a program can listen out for changes within the file system. The Linux kernel can deliver notification if a file has been accessed, or been modified, or deleted, or closed, or created, or moved between directories. And you can listen for events on individual files, or for whole directories. But be aware that the system is not recursive. Watching a directory does not automatically watch all its subdirectories. Why might you need to do this? Well, a graphical file manager needs to update its display of a directory when a file is added, for example. Or we might want to implement a daemon that does some kind of auditing of changes to the system files. Now, there are basically three phases to this. First, you create an iNotify instance. Then you add watch items to it. A watch item basically says, I want to monitor this file or this directory for these kinds of changes. And typically, you loop around here, adding several watches. In the third phase, we read the events and presumably do something with them. Maybe write them to a log file, update our graphical directory listing, and so on. Usually, you'll have a loop here too, processing the events one by one, although, as we'll see in a minute, you may pick up more than one event in a single read. Let's get on to the details. A call to iNotify init kicks the whole thing off, it takes no arguments, and it returns a file descriptor, an honest-to-goodness integer file descriptor like you'd get back from an open call, and on which you can perform a read. So here's another example of Linux's view that everything looks like a file. Our event stream will be read exactly as if it were an open file. Once we've got the instance, we can add watches to it with iNotify add watch. First argument is the file descriptor of the iNotify instance, as we've just seen. The second is the path name, this could be relative or absolute, um, of the file or the directory that you want to watch. And the third argument is a bit mask specifying which events you want to monitor. And we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. You get back a thing called a watch descriptor. These are just small integers. They're just allocated one, two, three, and so on that identifies this particular watch. And we'll see later on what we might use this for. Now, each event that you can watch for is specified as a single bit in the mask. And the intention is that you all them together to get the event combination that you want. Each of them has a symbolic constant. In access, for example, is the event that means that the file was accessed. This one means that a file's ownership or permissions were changed. These two are relevant if we're watching a directory. They indicate that a file was created or deleted within the watched directory. These events refer to the watched file itself to say that it was deleted or modified or moved. Now, I would stress that this is nowhere near a complete list, and I encourage you to read the man page for iNotify for the full story here. This slide just brings everything together. We create an iNotify instance and add watches to it. They are identified by descriptors, one, two, three, and so on. Each watch specifies a path and a mask. So these things are known as the watch items. The path specifies the name of the directory or file that you're watching, and the mask specifies which events are of interest for this path. So now we come to the third phase of the operation, 
reading the events. Now you remember that our call to I notify init returned a file descriptor and we just read from that descriptor. This read will block until an event occurs. Also be aware that we may get more than one event in a single read. The buffer that you supply will be populated on return with events. I've shown one event here. The total amount of data placed in the buffer is indicated by n, the, the value coming back from the read call, as usual for a read. And each of these items for an individual event is defined by an inotify event structure. Within here, wd is a watch descriptor, and mask is a bitwise or of the events that actually occurred on this watch descriptor. Those are the main two items in here. Now in the case of an event that's occurring on a directory, we also get back in here the name of the file within that directory that raised the event. And that's a variable length field. It's also padded out. So the, this part of the, uh, the buffer has variable length. The actual length is specified by the len field within the structure. In the case of an event on a file, we do not get that name back. We're expected to keep track of the names of the files that we're watching externally to this. However, the presence of this variable length component uh, within the event uh, does make it a little harder to loop a pointer over uh, along the records in the buffer, as we'll see in the code. On to the demonstration. Uh, this program is a little longer than some that we've looked at so far, so let's just get the big picture of what we're doing here. We're going to read a list of the files that we want to watch from a configuration file. We've explicitly chosen not to monitor directories, and the program explicitly excludes them. We're going to watch those files either for modification or for deletion. If such an event occurs, we're going to write it to a log file. 